Hello everyone, welcome to another video, another celestial tour. In this channel, you've learned about stars being powered by nuclear fusion in their course, hydrogen converting to helium. You've also learned about how massive stars die and how they become stellar black holes. Now, what if I told you that there is an extremely massive hypothetical star type that lived during the early periods of our universe, powered by material falling into a black hole at its core? and it is like approximately 15 times the size of the largest discovered hypergiant star Stephenson 218 and is extremely luminous at the same time. Meet the quasi-stars, the ancient stars that were powered by a black hole. Another name for these stars are even the black hole stars. So let's observe these monsters, shall we? Alright, so how do quasi-stars get formed? A big protostar's core collapsing into a black hole might produce a quasi-star if the protostar's outer layers are massive enough to absorb the ensuing blast of energy without being blasted away or falling into a black hole, as happens in current supernovas. Such a star would have to be at least a thousand solar masses. By the way, a solar mass means, no shocker, the mass of the sun. So a thousand solar masses mean thousand masses equivalent to the sun. One solar mass is about 2 nanillion kilograms. Quasi-stars may have been formed from dark matter halos too, which are capable of creating supermassive stars with tens of thousands of solar masses by sucking in large amounts of gas through gravity. Only early in the history of the universe, before heavier atoms polluted the hydrogen and helium, was it possible for quasi-stars to form. Quasi-stars may have been population 3 stars, if you don't know about the population of stars, you may look at the pinned comment I wrote below the video. I explained the three populations of stars. Such stars like quasi-stars would obviously make Stephenson 218 a dwarf star. The infall of stellar material would continue to provide a significant quantity of radiant energy until the black hole had formed at the protostar center. Constant energy output would counteract gravity's pull and establish an equilibrium to that which sustains today's fusion-based stars. The maximum lifespan of quasi-stars would have been brief, at around 7 million years, during which time the core black hole would have increased in size to roughly 1,000 to 10,000 solar masses. It has been proposed that these intermediate mass black holes are the ancestors of modern supermassive black holes. So we learned about the concept behind the quasi-stars, but what about its properties? It is anticipated that quasi-stars would have surface temperatures more than 10,000 Kelvin degrees, which is about 9,730 Celsius. Each one would be roughly as luminous as a dwarf galaxy at these temperatures and with a radius of 10 billion kilometers or 67 astronomical units or 14,000 times that of the sun. How do quasi-stars die? A quasi-star's envelope would gradually become transparent as it cooled until it reached the limitation temperature of 4000 Kelvin degrees, which is about 3730 Celsius. Since there's no hydrostatic equilibrium at or below this limiting temperature, the quasi-star's life would finish at this temperature. The intermediate mass black hole would then be left behind when the stars soon vanished. So, this is an explanation of the hypothetical ancient quasi-stars. I hope you learned something and once again got amazed by what the universe can present us. Thank you for watching and stay astronomical.